race for a vaccine, the rollout of mass inoculation programs, the world's never seen so many funds flow into the prevention of a disease. But while everyone's focused on vaccines, what about a cure or treatment for those infected or those of us who could still catch the coronavirus? Especially as a second or third wave crests in many countries. We need a three-month lockdown, not three weeks. There's no other treatment and we'll still have problems. Meanwhile, tens of millions of people around the world are still fighting for their lives. Hospitals only have a small arsenal of treatments against COVID-19 and health authorities have their reservations about some of them. The other catch is that all of the treatments have to be given early in the course of the disease. Otherwise, they can be counterproductive. Seriously ill COVID-19 patients can expect to get much more effective treatment nowadays. Doctors are no longer fighting an unknown cunning entity as they were in the initial stages of the pandemic. They know much more about the coronavirus, its effects, and the medication which can help in an emergency. For one, we know that it all depends on proactive treatment of symptoms, consistently reducing fever, pain relief, antibiotics if needed, additional oxygen, and if necessary, prompt ventilation. And we also have two treatment strategies now which target the disease more accurately. Doctors treating serious cases of COVID-19 now rely primarily on those medications. Remdesivir is used to restrict viral reproduction. But it needs to be administered in the early stages of treatment. However, a recent study by the World Health Organization caused a stir when it said remdesivir only has a minimal or even no influence on mortality or the length of hospital stays. COVID-19 specialists at Hanover's University Hospital say they've had different results with it. We have high-quality studies which show remdesivir has a measurable effect on the course of the disease, especially if administered promptly and the patient is not seriously ill. That's the window of opportunity. With badly ill patients like those in intensive care who've been symptomatic for longer, then remdesivir probably won't work. The study's also clear about that. Doctors have also discovered that administering cortisone to severely ill COVID-19 patients can be quite effective. We now know the coronavirus provokes life-threatening immune system reactions involving drastic inflammation of organs and blood vessels. Cortisone reduces swelling and that can save lives, especially of those patients who need ventilating. The complexity of the disease makes finding a targeted therapy a serious challenge. In later stages, patients are at risk of developing issues, such as thromboses in their lungs and organs. Some patients can suffer long-term effects. While great progress has been made on finding a vaccine for COVID-19, the wait for a cure continues. Inflorex is a biopharmaceuticals company that develops treatments. CEO Niels Riedemann joins us. So scientists have found several vaccines, all in record time, but where does that leave people like you, doctors and researchers who are looking for treatments? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. I'm, I'm much appreciated. Um, yeah, treatments are, um, are a different animal, so to speak. And I think they are clearly important um, with respect to COVID-19. You know, the, a lot of people don't, are not really aware that this, this disease has many different facets and many different faces. Yes, there's the healthy population that needs to be protected. Vaccines are of utmost importance. And then there's those that get sick and get well soon. And then there's those that get very sick and they need treatment and they may have problems and even die. And as we know, that's that's why we are all afraid uh, about this disease. And I think treatments are important. Uh, there are companies like ours that have studied and worked in the field of viral inflammation and viral uh, sepsis for many, many years, trying to prevent our immune response causing damage. To, to tissues and organs and leading to multi-organ failure and death. And so I think if this works and if, if, we, if we here can make an impact, of course, that's a great news for the people that are greatly affected and that are really severely critically ill. But it also is, um, I think, a, a, great, a great thing to have for new pandemics or for mutating viruses because mm. the immune response patterns, they are very similar between viruses. And uh, if we were to be successful with the treatment, that could be a great protection also in the long run. 
Just how effectively can drugs and therapies help sufferers cope with COVID-19? Uh, we, we do believe they can. I mean, this, the, the bar is relatively high. You need to show it in well-controlled clinical studies. So you can't just have uh, good early results and say, I'm going to run for an authorization approval. You have to really statistically plan a trial, treat enough patients, and prove that your drug can, in our case, try to prevent um, mortality, prevent death, or in other cases, prevent that patients get more severely sick, uh, get intubated, get dependent on life uh, and organ support. So we believe uh, that there are drugs in the early stages uh, of the disease that may prevent the virus causing the strong immune response and causing through replication. And then there are drugs like ours that when you have a strong immune response, trying to modulate that response and trying to prevent that your immune system causes damage to your own organs. So we have seen interesting early stage phase two data that point to a potential mechanism. We've published this in the Lancet Rheumatology, and we believe we can help patients. That's why we went to phase three, and, and uh, we're eager to see data this year. But Mr. Riedemann, you then need the funds, don't you, to, um, to, to produce these drugs. And uh, that, that funding gap seems to be quite big between what's going into vaccines and what's going into treatments like yours. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, we, as you know, we've, uh, we founded an initiative in Germany called Beatkov, and I, I know a lot of my colleagues have the same topic. We've seen phenomenal and great fast funding for vaccines. And in fact, in Europe, and specifically in Germany, we have not seen targeted funding for the late stage projects that are, would be equivalent to vaccines. So while there were very early programs for preclinical research, which won't see the patient in, in, the, in the years to come, and now there's first programs for early stage clinical research that is, of course, size wise, a multiple lower with 40, 50 million altogether for multiple tasks. Um, we need a funding that is equivalent uh, and that is, is a real funding for late stage projects, meaning that you can produce uh, a material for the market for the patients fast, that you can prepare for the market and that you can run the expensive phase three studies. This is largely completely lacking here. And that's why we founded BeatCoff. We really want to make create awareness that this may be of utmost importance also in the midterm as we, we may have um, therapeutics available um, already during this year. And then we want to get them to the patient. Very briefly, tell me more about your drug and if it will actually get to the market. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a CEO of a public company. I'm not supposed to make uh, forward-looking statements predicting the future. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about our conviction about the mechanism that we are after and that we are the, the, the founders of this company. I'm one of them. We are 20 years in this type of research. So we do believe there's a chance that we can make it to the market. Otherwise, we would have not started phase three. And, you know, it's a similar thing with the vaccines. There is always a risk that it doesn't work long term. There's always a risk that's not. But, but we've taken the risk and we've seen phenomenal responses. First ones here with a German company, BioNTech, together with Pfizer. Uh, than Moderna in the U.S. So, so uh, why not also invest in therapeutics? I mean, if we have progress there, it would make a whole lot of difference for affected patients and potentially also for future pandemics. That's why I'm really advocating to put more funds to help therapeutics, new therapeutics, targeted therapeutics, to also make it into the clinic. Inflorex CEO Niels Riedemann, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Time for your questions on the coronavirus. Over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. Should the drug Ivermectin be used to treat COVID-19 patients? This medication has been widely used in some parts of the world, um, especially South America, uh, as a treatment for COVID-19, despite the fact that, that evidence that it works is still not convincing. Um, the Bolivian government actually authorized it as a therapy back in May um, after a very theoretical and controversial study in April indicated that ivermectin might help against SARS-CoV-2. Um, the compound, which is made by microorganisms that break down organic matter in the soil, um, is a powerful tool in our pharmacological toolbox for getting rid of a wide range of, of nasty parasites. 
among them head lice and intestinal pinworms. Um, in fact, the researchers who discovered the class of substances it belongs to won the Nobel Prize for their work a few years ago. There are dozens of ongoing trials looking at whether or not ivermectin could also be used to treat COVID-19, but so far, uh, none of them have provided the kind of clear-cut evidence that national or international health authorities uh, would require to recommend it. Um, published studies are at odds, with some showing no benefits or, or, or even that COVID-19 patients who took the antiparasitic drug got worse, um, while others reported improvements or, or positive results, like lower mortality rates in patients that took it. Um, the thing is, for basically all of the studies published so far, experts have complained about flaws in methodologies. So at the moment, at least, I would continue to ignore any sensationalist online claims that ivermectin can cure or help cure COVID-19 and wait for more data from larger scale trials to come in. Um, pretty much all authorities are still issuing warnings not to take the compound for anything except what it's meant for, to treat an infestation with parasites, and, and also to stick to the prescribed doses for that. Um, if their advice changes, I'll let you know here. And just briefly, officials are deploying dogs to sniff out COVID infections in some schools in Italy. The company that trains them says it was able to get their canine companions up to speed in a few weeks. Hundreds of students and teachers at this high school handed over masks for testing. The dogs managed to signal five out of 260 tests.